فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روب الخير Okay, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and good morning to everyone MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. The first thing is, I am so happy to be here. Could you see me smile from the time I walked in? Yes. MashaAllah, I'm so happy to be here. Do you know why? Because I'm seeing you for the first time. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, I'm so glad. So I want to share something with you guys today. Is it fine? Yes. But you're going to have to be speaking to me, okay? You're going to have to answer my questions. If you don't answer, then I'm going to have to run away. I'm going to go because that means that maybe you don't want to listen to me. So who wants to listen to me? Put up your hand. Okay, you can put your hands down. Mashallah, that makes me happy, okay? Right, tell me something. What do you want to do after you finish your studies? What do you want to do after you graduate from school and university? What would you like to do? Yes, I'm going to pick one or two of you. So put your hands up. Yes. He wants to have a rest after school. Okay, okay, okay. That's interesting. Okay, what do you want to do? Stay? Stay asleep. Okay, let me, let me change my question, okay? Can I change my question? Put your hands down. You're, you're now in the school, and there will come a time when you graduate from primary school, and then you graduate from high school, and then you become something, and you want to go to the university to become that thing that you want to become. And when you become something, then where do you want to go? Yes. Say it again. He want to be a doctor. Ooh, that's excellent. Yes. What do you want to do? You want to be a sheikh. Ooh, mashallah. I can picture you a sheikh. Mashallah. Mashallah. Okay. Yes. What do you want to do? A general in the army. Ooh, I'm scared of you. Mashallah. Mashallah. Okay. At the back there. Mashallah, fishermen. Very interesting. Okay, can you? Okay, you can put your hands down. Can you notice something? Everyone has, everyone has a different answer. Did you notice that? Yeah. There might be some of you who have a similar answer, but a lot of you have different answers. One wants to be a doctor, a teacher, a fisherman, a general in the army. So many different things. So what I want to tell you today is, everyone who is so different together makes up one big family. Do you understand? If you have a family of say four, you and your sister or your brother and maybe or two brothers or two, three brothers or sisters, everyone does not need to do the same thing to be loved by the other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. We do different things. Today I might be a sheikh, my friend is a teacher, the other one is a head, someone is a doctor, someone is a policeman, someone is, for example, maybe a fisherman. As he said, that was very interesting. We all love each other and we all need each other. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay, I tell you what Allah says in the Quran. He says, <laughs> It means don't forget to be good, to be kind, to be virtuous to one another among yourselves. Don't forget to be kind to each other. We love everyone, no matter where they come from, no matter what size they are, no matter what color they are, no matter what ethnicity they may be, meaning where they come from originally, we love everyone. Because together, we make one big family. And to be a loving family, you don't need to be exactly the same. Do you understand? You don't need to think the same. You don't need to want to do the same thing. If everyone on earth was a doctor, who would be the policeman? Who would catch the fish for us, right? So we need some people who catch fish, right? So that we can have the tuna and everything else that we're enjoying from the supermarkets, right? Who likes fish? Put up your hand. Ooh, everyone, put your hands down. Well, good luck. You're going to make a lot of money. You're going to make a lot of money. There are so many people who are going to be buying the fish. Mashallah. Okay. And who wants to be safe? Everyone wants to be safe, right? Well, we need a general in the army. Put your hands down. And we need the policemen and we need to appreciate them. We need to appreciate them. You understand what that means? You respect them, you acknowledge them, and you're happy that they are there. They don't need to be exactly like you. Someone wants to be a sheikh. You need a sheikh. Wow, congratulations, man. You need a sheikh to come and tell you a few good words sometimes. But guess what? Your teachers tell you good words as well. Your mom, your dad tell you good words as well. Is that right? 
What do you do to a good word? When someone tells you something good, they give you advice. Say you're screaming and someone says, don't scream. Or you don't want to go to school and someone says, go to school. What do you do when they give you good words? Yes. Thank you. you say thank you. That's a good answer. Yes. You say, okay, okay. And then what do you do? And then you run away? No. Okay. You say, okay. And then what do you do? And then you listen to them, right? You're happy that someone was telling you. You know, I give you another example. If, if, if there is a piece of food stuck on your, on your lip or somewhere here, and someone tells you, hey, there's a piece of food stuck on your, on your mouth. You know, you need to clean it. Are you going to say, don't tell me. I'm not happy. I don't want to talk to you. And you go away. Or are you going to say, oh, thank you so much. And you're going to feel like a little bit uneasy. But at the same time, you're happy that no one else saw it. And you quickly cleaned it. And then... What did you do? You look better, right? You look, into, you look into the mirror and you're happy because you no longer have a piece of muck or dirt on your face. Who told it to you? Someone told you, right? Someone told you. If they did not tell you, you would be walking around all day with a silly mark or a piece of food on your face and everyone would be laughing at you and you wouldn't know why they're laughing at you, okay? So you're happy when someone tells you something that is beneficial. The same way you should be happy when your mom and your dad tell you, hey, don't lie. Don't tell a lie. Who tells lies? Put up your hand. Who lies? Woo! Think again. Who lies? Who tells a lie? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Okay, put your hands down. Put your hands down. Okay, this is the last day we've ever gonna, we're ever going to tell a lie, okay? Is that fine? Okay, can I tell you how I look at it? Can I tell you how I look at it? You're lying. You're lying that you lie, okay? Which means, I said, who lies? You put up your hand. That means you're telling a lie, right? You don't lie. Do you lie? No, you don't. Say, say no, I don't lie and I won't lie. Say that. I don't lie and I won't lie. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. You see, if you look at all of us, when we grow older, when we, when we become... Uh, someone we want to become, we're either going to be at a job where we're working for someone or we're working for ourselves and we might employ someone else. There might be someone else working for us. So those are the probabilities and possibilities. You work for someone, you work for yourself, you employ someone else. In all three cases, you need to be honest. You need to be honest. You need to be truthful. You need to be telling the truth and you need to be an upright person. Otherwise, you're going to fail. If someone is, is not well, okay, and you're a doctor, and you were too lazy to check them and to diagnose properly, and you just gave them paracetamol, or you just told them, you know what, it must be just a simple headache, take this and go away. That's not fair. You're cheating. You need to check. You need to make sure you look at their pressure, you look at the temperature. You know, when you go to the doctor, don't they put something into your mouth, a little, like an ice cream stick, and tell you, say, ah, uh, do they do that? Yeah, because they need to check. They cannot just look at you and guess what's happened. Otherwise, that's not right. You open your mouth. They've got to check. If you say my throat and I'm coughing, they've got to check that it's not gone so bad. Because that's the job they have. If they're honest, they will check you thoroughly. They might put the stethoscope on you and ask you to breathe in. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. It's exciting when I was... Oh, they don't do that. Woo. Okay, the next time you go, you can ask the doctor. Say, say, can you check me with the stethoscope, please? Okay? Okay, so when I was young, I used to think it's going to pain. I used to say, no, no. But then I found out it's something cold, actually. <sighs> you just do that, right? And they check how you're breathing, just in case there's something wrong. Now, why am I saying this? Because the doctor is honest. The doctor is truthful. That's why they're doctors. And that's why they have gotten so far. If someone is not truthful, they're not going to go far. They're not going to go far. If you cheat in your exams, you're going to get caught. And if you get caught, you're going to be disqualified. And if you're disqualified, you're not going to be able to go to the next level. Is that correct? Yes. So don't cheat. Don't cheat. It's fine. Like my dad used to tell me, I don't need you to be first in class. I just need you to try the best, the, the hardest. To try your best. That's what you need to do. Because if you're 20 in the class or 10 in the class, how many are going to be first in the class? Tell me. One, or maybe if you're lucky, you might have a tie. Two, two of you came exactly first, right? Very rarely would you find three coming first. Whoa, I've never seen the whole class come first. Have you? 
No, I haven't. I haven't. So what, if one is going to be first, the others, even though they tried hard and they did very well, it's not fair for us to just say, oh, you guys are lazy. We're not lazy. We worked hard. We did very well. You know, when I go to the doctor, I don't ever tell him, hang on. Were you first in class or second in class when you were in grade 5? When you were in year, year 10, did, were you first or were you second? Or did you pass or did you fail the first time or second? No. The fact that finally and ultimately they got the certificate and they became a doctor, it's okay what happened. They enjoyed themselves or their time at the school. They were honest. They worked hard. They were loving. They appreciated everybody. And guess what? Today they became a doctor and we go to them and we actually benefit from them and we pray for them. You need to pray for everybody who helps you, right? Anyone who helps you, you appreciate it by asking the Almighty to help them, to guide them, to have mercy on them, to bless them in every way. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I was saying as you grow older, you need honesty. You need to be honest. And there is another quality that you need that I'm going to mention. But before I say it, I want to tell you a story of the Prophet Moses. May peace be on him. Who knows the Prophet Moses or Musa alayhi salam? Put up your hand. Lovely. We all know him. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Okay. One day he went to a place called Median. He went to a place called? Median. And in Median, he helped some girls, some ladies actually do something. What did he help them do? They had a flock of sheep and they wanted to help or they wanted that flock of sheep to drink water. And so they were, they were actually standing back because there were too many people by the well. There were too many people by the well. And the prophet Moses comes along. They did not know who he was. And, and they, uh, he asked them, why are you guys, why are you so far back? Why don't you take your sheep right to the to the well and let the sheep drink water. And they said, oh, there are too many people there. They're all men there. We're women. He said, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. I will help you. What did he say? I will help you. Wow. How many of us say, I will help you to someone who's stuck? Put up your hands. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Mashallah. Put your hands down. When you see someone who's stuck, when you see a person struggling, you tell them, I will help you. And you try to help them. That's what we learn from the story. One of the things we learn. He said to them, I will help you. Because he saw that they were struggling. He saw that they were struggling. struggling. So he said, I will help you. And he took all of these sheep with him. And he went right to the mouth of the well. And he started making them drink water. And they drank and drank and drank lots of water. And then he came back. After they had finished and he gave them to these ladies who were taking care of the sheep. And they were so thankful and they went home. When they went home, their father was a great man. Do you know what their father said? He said, how come you're back so early today? How come you're back so early? Every time you go, you take so long and today you're back early. So they said, there was a man who helped us. There was a man who helped us. He was so kind. He was so honest. He was so genuine. And he was strong. He was a strong man because we saw what he did. So guess what happened? One of the ladies said, well, you know what? Why don't we employ him? Why don't we employ him? Employ meaning, why don't we give him a job? He's a strong man and he's an honest man. So listen to the verse. In the Quran, Allah describes this and Allah says, قَالَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا يَا أَبَتِ اسْتَأْجِرْهُ إِنَّ خَيْرَ مَنِ اسْتَأْجَرْتَ الْقَوِيُّ الْأَمِينَ Allah says, one of the ladies said, Oh my father, why don't you employ him or give him a job? Because the best person you could ever give a job to is he who is strong and hardworking. Honest, sorry. Strong and honest, which means hardworking and honest. And this man is honest and he's hardworking. So the father says, go and call him, bring him here. We'll give him the job. And it ended that after a few years, the prophet Moses, may peace be on him, actually married one of those ladies. Now, what I want to raise from here is, if you want a good job, you need these two qualities. You need two qualities. The first is honesty. We spoke about it, right? Don't lie. Be honest, be upright, tell the truth all the time, right? Tell the truth all the time. All the time, tell the truth. And the second is, be hard working, don't be lazy. Fight laziness. Early morning, get up and come to school happily with a smile. 
with a smile. Be at school early. Because if you're hard working, you will get a very, very good job. If you're not hard working, do you know what will happen? People will say, nah, I don't want this person. They come late every day. And when they come, they're not in a good mood. They're so upset. They look at us and they're all, you know, in our language we say groggy. You know, they're very, they, they don't even want to talk. They just look so down. Smile. When I walked in here, I was smiling and I was delighted because you were smiling. That's why I'm speaking the way I am because your energy comes to me as well. When I look at you and you're smiling, I suddenly smile. I feel the energy. I can feel the energy. energy. But if everyone just looked down and said, morning, yeah, okay. Are you happy? Oh, I'm happy. I would feel so down and so sad because, because everyone else is sad. I would wonder, why are you guys so sad? What's happening? Why are you so sad? And then you know what would happen? Everyone is sad and it's a sad world and everyone looks at each other. No one wants to greet each other. No one wants to smile at each other. And everyone thinks, I'm not talking to this one and that one. We want to go back to bed. We want to go back to bed. How many of you love sleeping? Put up your hand. Woo. Okay, I love sleeping too. Put your hands down. I love sleeping too. But guess what? I love getting up in the morning as well. I love getting up in the morning because I know it's a fresh new day. And I know if I waste this day, I'm not going to be able to succeed because I've been given so many days. Every day counts. Every day counts. counts. When I get up in the morning, I need to make sure that I made that day count. So I have to get up. I have to get dressed on time. I have to have my tea and cereal, my little breakfast on time. And I have to get to school on time and when I get to school I'm happy I'm smiling morning sir morning ma'am how are you and so on and everyone looks at me hey nice to see you again that's the way it should be when you're hard working that's how you are and if you are like that you'll be the best fisherman you'll catch the most fish you know what early in the morning you get a lot of fish by the way right yes and you'll be the best general in the army and the best policeman and the best doctor and the best sheikh because you get up I had to get up to come to you. If I was sleeping, I wouldn't be able to speak to you. I would not be able to come. You know, I traveled. Do you know how much I traveled to get to you? I think almost two whole days. Almost two whole days, I promise you. And I came via the Philippines and Singapore. So you can imagine where I've been. And the plane was just going on and on. And then when we touched Australia, I thought, okay, we're almost there. But we kept flying for another four or five hours. And I'm like, hang on, have we gotten there? No, we haven't. Not yet. And then when I landed, I was excited because I knew I was coming to Malik Fahad to see you guys. I was so excited. And that's why I'm so happy to be speaking to you. So we learned two things, okay? You need to be hardworking and honest. honest. If you have one of the two, you cannot succeed. Say someone is very hardworking. But they're not honest. They steal, they pinch, they cheat, they deceive. Can they succeed? No. No, they cannot. And if someone is very honest, but they don't have hard work, they don't cheat, they don't steal, they don't tell lies, but they're never there. They don't get up in the morning. They're lazy. When the teacher or your mom or your dad or anyone tells you, you know what, you need to get this done. You say, nah, no, I'm just sitting in, in front of the television watching TV. You can watch TV, but you need to know your time limit. You need to know your time limit. Can you watch TV all night, every night? Yes. Even, oh, someone says yes. Can you watch TV all night, every night? Yes. Woo, that's dangerous. Okay, okay. I can solve the problem for you. If you watch TV, okay, okay. What he means by you can is that a person might be able to do that, but it's not a good idea. Is it a good idea? No. Okay. It's a better question. It's not a good idea. Why is it not a good idea? Because you can become lazy. You won't be able to get up in the morning. You've been, you've been awake all night. So when your mom or your dad, 8 o'clock, they say get to bed. Who gets to bed at 8 o'clock? Put up your hand. Oh, it's too early. Who gets to bed at 9? Put up your hand. Okay, who gets to bed by 10? Put up your hand. I see. Wow, mashallah. That's great. Okay, put your hands down. Put your hands down. But you need... Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's listen to this. Let's listen to this. Okay? You get up to you, you get up early morning and you can only get up if you go to bed on time. So you can watch the television, but there needs to be a cutoff, cutoff time. Another big thing you need to worry about is guess what? This thing here. Phones, iPads, and all technology, it's very, very good. But 
Sometimes it can really destroy you if you don't know how to use it and you don't set yourself limits. If you're on your phone playing games all night and you know you pretend to be sleeping and inside you've got a game and you, you're playing a game, are you going to be able to get up in the morning? No. So you need, to, <laughs> you need to put your phone away. You need to put it away. When the time is right, you put it away. When, you, when the time is right, you can play. Meaning you need to know the timing, okay? So if you want a good job and you want to be a successful doctor and you want to be a successful sheikh and you want to be a successful army general and you want to be a successful fisherman, for example, or doctor or anyone else, you need to be disciplined. Discipline meaning you must have a timetable, a routine. I'm going to bed at this time. If you're delayed by 5-10 minutes, it's okay. Not, a bad, not, not bad. Once in a while you might break that rule. That's okay. But you need to know, I want to succeed. I must be disciplined. I need to have my timings in order. I need to make sure I know how long to play for. I cannot play all day. You play for a while and then you go to school. And then you go to bed. And then it's time to eat. Right? It's time to eat. Sometimes when you're watching a movie, your favorite movie, and it's time to eat, you feel lazy to go and eat. Right? You feel lazy because you don't want to miss out. Hang on. Don't worry. Press pause. Go and eat. Come back later and you can finish it. Is that fine? Okay. That's a good deal. Mashallah. So, if you can actually have within you some of the qualities I spoke about today, you will definitely be able to succeed. You will definitely be able to succeed. I started off by speaking about loving each other appreciating each other, knowing that we need everybody. We need the baker. We need the baker. Do we need the baker for bread? Yes. So anyone who wants to be a baker, put up your hand. Yeah, see, they want to be bakers. They're going to bake some nice bread and we're going to be buying the bread. Okay, put your hands down. We need the baker. We need the milkman. We need so many others. So we love them. We appreciate them. When we see them, we greet them. Thank you very much. Yes, we will greet them. Good morning. Good afternoon. Right? Right? Yes. yes, we will. We will. We will greet them. Okay. The reason is together we make the community that we live in, the society, we build our nation together. And everyone, like I said, thinks differently. I spoke about honesty. I spoke about working hard. And I spoke about being disciplined and making sure that you know your time limits and all other limits. Okay. I don't want to speak for so long. I know I've just spoken for 22, 23 minutes and I was given about half an hour. But I think I've said a lot. I want to spend the rest of my time answering your questions if you have any. So if you want to ask me a question, a good question, you can put up your hand and I will answer that question or I will try. If it's a very difficult question, I might tell you, I don't know. You've got to ask someone else. Like if you ask me what is 5,429 multiplied by 3,005, I'm going to tell you, listen, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so you can ask me questions. Let's go. Yes. I'm from Zimbabwe. That's in Africa, in the southern part of Africa. Who's been to Zimbabwe? Put up your hand. Ooh, wow, lovely. Put your hands down. That means they know where, where it is. Okay, put your hands down. That's in southern Africa. Okay, question, question number two um, from this side. What's your question? How do you become a sheikh? How do you become a sheikh? Well, I tell you what. Number one, you need to be hardworking. Number two, you need to be honest. Number three, you need to study certain courses and you need to understand you need to like it actually if you want to be something then you, you it's best to be that because the reason is and i'm just just pause with me for a moment just hold on the reason i say you need to like it is because there is no point in becoming something your heart does not want to become don't let someone force you to become a doctor when you don't want to be a doctor because after you spend so much money becoming a doctor, you're then going to go into business and say, you know what, that was a waste of time. Don't do that. So you need to want to be something. So you have to do the course and you have to learn, uh, you know, scriptures. You have to understand faiths, all different faiths. You have to understand uh, what all the Almighty wants from you. And you have to be ready to share it selflessly with others. You have to be ready to share it with others. Because what a sheikh is supposed to be doing, he's supposed to be teaching the people what God Almighty wants from them. And he wants us to love one another. Exactly as I said today. Whatever message I gave to you today, it's, it's what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay? So to bring people together, to understand we're all part of one family. We're all the children of Adam and Eve. Adam and Hawa, may peace be upon them. So we've come onto the earth. And while we're on earth, we're going to do the best job before we go back 
to God Almighty to tell him what we've done and for him to know that we've really tried our best. So we're going to try our best while we're on earth. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, question, yes. Yes, I know all the Quran juzes. Yeah, I've memorized them. When I was uh, nine years old, I started. And when I was 11, I finished. So it took me... It took me 9, 10, 11, 2 and a half to 3 years. I used to study a page a day and I used to memorize it. And I used to do go to school as well. You can see, I told you, you have to work very, very hard. Very hard. If you want to get something, you have to work hard. You have to work hard. Yes. What kind of countries have I been to? That's a very good question. Okay, I've been to first world countries and third world countries. Do you know the difference? First world countries are developed countries that have all the infrastructure, everything. It's very modern and it's, it works properly. Everything is good. So I've been to so many places, right? But I've also been to poor countries where I've seen people. I've seen people, in order to get water, they have to walk for five kilometers with a bucket and get to the river and then fill water in buckets and put it on their heads and come back just so that just that they can have a bath and the water sometimes is not even clean and i've known how they then cut firewood from the trees and they burn in order to make the water hot to try and take out the bacteria purify the water when it's cooled again they drink the water and i know areas of people who don't have electricity so to have, to drink cold water for them is not an option so you need to thank the Almighty. We have a fridge, we have a tap, we just turn it on and the water comes out. So don't waste the water. There are other people who don't have that gift that you and I have. So if you ask me where I've been, I've been to so many places. Recently, I was in a country called Ghana. Ghana is in West Africa. And I went to a country called Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. The capital of Sierra Leone is Freetown. In Freetown, there was a mudslide. There was so much, there was so much rain that... The mountain that was all sandy and it had soil on it, it, it was softened and it fell down. Have you ever heard of a mountain falling down? Yes. Something called mudslides where part of a mountain actually falls down. It comes down and what it does, it creates a huge pile in the valley. And if there are houses or people in that valley, they are covered in, they are covered in mud. And they lose their lives and there is destruction. And I visited the place and I went to the place where the mudslide happened to pray. And they were telling me, you're crazy. How could you go there? I said, I'm not crazy. I love these people. Even though they happen to be poor people in Africa, they are my family. They have eyes just like I do. They have a nose. They have everything just like I do. I need to care for them. If I don't go to pray for them, then it means I, I have a heart that is hard. And if you have a hard heart, you're not going to have a happy life. To have a happy life, you need to have a heart that is softened. When you see someone in need, what did I say earlier? You need to help them. help them. So that's why I went out to help and I learned so much. I cried that day. I cried so many tears because I saw people so happy. But they don't have phones. They don't have electricity. They don't even have clothes. They don't even have shoes, I promise you. And they're so happy. They're smiling. They're happier than my children. So happy because... They make the most of whatever they've been blessed with. You know, with us, if your mom doesn't buy you exactly the same food you want, or the cereal you want, or the chocolate you want, or the type of clothing you want, you get upset. I don't want it. I'm not. With them, they don't mind. They have a piece of cloth, they tie it around their bellies, and they have a little shirt that might have, you know, it might have been used in some country, and someone sent them secondhand clothes. They really loved it. They appreciated it. And you know what? They wore it and they said, thank you. And they prayed for the people who sent them old clothes. When your clothes become too small, when you are not going to wear them again, I can suggest to you what you can do. You can donate them to someone who's going to send them to countries that don't have these clothes. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Because we, yes, or you can give them to someone. You know, we call them hand-me-downs. Like, maybe your big brother might give them to you. But there comes a stage when you don't want it anymore. Don't just throw it away. Look for a charity. Look for some people who, who do good. Get to your school and say, look, we want to give our old clothes away. Maybe to a poorer country that doesn't have... Doesn't necessarily have to be in Africa. It could be anywhere else. And you make a donation. So, 
You're not wasting something that someone else could use. So, yeah, thank you so much for that question because, look, it came up with a lot of goodness and we said some good things. I hope you've learned. I don't have a list of the countries I've been to, but trust me, I've been to a lot of, lot of countries. And I've seen so many people. And what I've learned is happiness does not come by having things that are material, but it comes by a condition within your heart and mind that you need to actually tune so that you can be happy. Okay. Okay, yes, your question. Yes. What do I work for? I work for God Almighty. I actually work in order... Okay. I, I don't get paid for what I do. I don't get paid for what I do. I have a little business back at home that my family is running, and that's how I get my income, okay? But when I go around talking to people, I do it free of charge. I actually go, sometimes I fly at my own expense and so on, and I will go and talk to people because it's a passion I have. I really love doing this, so that's why I'm here. It's not like someone's paying me to be here, but I really love doing it. So I actually work for, for God Almighty, and at the same time, we do have a little business that we're running, and, and it's progressing, alhamdulillah. I hope that answers your question. It does? Okay. Yes, at the back. Have you always wanted to be a sheikh? Have I always wanted to be a sheikh? The answer is no. No. I can explain. I wanted to be an ophthalmologist. I had very, very good results when I was at school. You can put your hands down. When I was at school, I had very good results. I wanted to be an ophthalmologist. And you know what happened? I was about to get into a university and I didn't know someone had applied. Someone had applied for me without me knowing to a university in Medina where I would be studying theology and religion. And Medina, you know, for Muslims, like Medina is a very, very dear place. We all want to go to Medina and Mecca. And we're so happy when we go there because we know it's spiritually very, very elevating. So my father told me, he said, well, you know what? Since this application has been approved and, you know, you, you do have a place, why don't you go there for now until your application for another university is accepted? If you still want to do medicine, then you can do that later on. But for now, don't waste this opportunity and I said okay let me go I went to Medina I'd already studied a lot of religion because my father is a sheikh so you know they say when your father's a doctor the likelihood of you becoming a doctor is far more you know but the same applies to teachers I think if you're a teacher sometimes your children might become teachers and they'll be better than us inshallah so I tell you what happened my dad told me to go when I went I just loved the place initially it was a struggle but I loved the place and I loved what happened and I, I enjoyed it and I kept enjoying it more and more. So by that time, I was no longer interested in doing what I had initially uh, planned on doing when I was at school and as I graduated and I had applied for a place. And uh, subhanallah, I ended up doing something. It was more, more of a calling, as they say, where you, know, you end up doing something because the Almighty has chosen that path for you. So that's the answer to your question. Very good question. Thanks. Um, Okay, the high school section. Okay, you, you guys are going to have to put your hands down. I've given you a chance. Let's take questions from there. The reason I was not taking questions from there is the high school guys are going to be asking me more difficult questions. Right? Let's get interesting. Okay, yes. Is it haram to do art as a job? No, it's not haram to do art as a job. It depends what you're doing with the art. Any, any profession you have, it depends what you're doing with it. Uh, so it's not haram to study it and to graduate in it. If you have a passion for it, you can use it. In fact, I'm going to introduce you to something amazing, amazing. I, I'm, I have a passion for art. I've always had an A in art, including secondary school. And subhanAllah, I've, I've always enjoyed it. And it happens to be within my family. So in my family, my children and my, my nephews, my nieces, they're really, really, really good at art. So much so that... There is, a, there is a model that my nephew created of a suburb of New York. And I'm going to show it to you because it's on Instagram. He just finished it a few days ago and he put it up. It's, it's an A-level piece of work. He must be about 6, 17 or A-level. A-level is like after O-level, okay? So what he did is he got all of us to give him our old phones, our old gadgets, our old radios, tape recorders, all old things, right? That electronics that didn't work. He opened all of them, broke them up. He got this map, uh, he got this uh, Google map of that part of uh, New York. And he created, he made exact buildings with all these things cut to ratio a specific size 
of that particular place. And you know what? It's amazing. I was blown away by this. And, and although he's a son of a sheikh, but trust me, he doesn't have to be a sheikh. You don't have to do what your dad's done. You can be different because we need you as well. Whatever God Almighty has put in your heart to become, become that. Use it in the right way. You know, like I told him, I said, you know what, I know you've done this, but I'm sure from here you probably will become, you know, maybe uh, an interior designer, maybe something else. It started off in this way, but you become something else. You know, you can become an engineer. Uh, art is one thing. If you want to take just art itself to a higher level, you may do so. You definitely may do so. What you may have to do is learn what you can and what you cannot do. The restrictions are very limited, actually. Yes, a question at the back there. Yes, brother? Uh, you know what? Uh, there are two, three things. It's actually you study religion to, to a certain point, and we are still students. I correct myself every day. If you tell me you were wrong for something, and this is a very interesting point, let's listen to this. If you tell me, no matter how old you are, that you are wrong about something, I'm, I won't just say it's okay and ignore you. I will take it seriously, and I'm going to go back and check if you were right. I'm going to correct myself and I'm going to thank you for correcting myself. So no matter who you are, you're a human being. We're prone to error. We make mistakes. The best drivers also make an accident sometimes, right? The best people can actually go wrong sometimes. So what happens, you study to a certain point and you keep studying. But after a certain point, in, in, in certain countries, it's different everywhere. In certain countries, they have a position, a position of a mufti. So... Sometimes it's within organizations and sometimes it's within the country itself. And you're either elected there or appointed there by a council of scholars or by the government itself. And from that point, you have a very great responsibility to guide people because the difference between an ordinary scholar and a mufti is a mufti is empowered to, to issue religious decrees like an edict. You issue a religious decree in a specific matter. Say, for example, there is a marital issue. Uh, I could actually issue a decree that would nullify a marriage if I believe that the reasons of nullification are valid. Now, that's something that's not a joke. I I'm telling you, it's a very serious matter. It's not easy to do, but we can do it and we do it. So it depends over time. There are some courses that you would have to complete because in order to be appointed, you would need to have specific qualifications. Like if you want to be a, a teacher, you need to have a specific qualification. If not, you're going to be a trainee until the time you get to that. If you want to be a head, you need to have X amount of experience, for example, or whatever the requirements are. And if you want to go higher, you're going to need those qualifications. This is what happens to become a mufti. Yes. Sorry. I know you're so busy, and I know we know, and I do always appreciate you even coming to Oxton Park to talk to all of our students. But most importantly, Mufti Meng, what I love most is how you go around the world and help people. Who, and you bring a ray of sunshine to people who are not as lucky as us, but I would like you to know that this, this campus here and all the students, you can see by our pink ribbon, they raise money for people with cancer, but what I love most was your story about people who are unfortunate, not as lucky as us to have water, they've donated to Human Appeal, all of the students here have contributed to that, so we can donate to countries and create wells, so people are that lucky. But I know you were so busy, so I do appreciate your time. I'll let you finish up, and then we're going to our canteen um, and our staff are put on a morning tea. Wow. I know you have to, but to everyone else, I would like at the end, only our school captains and our SRC from Term 4, you're going to be with me, but to everyone else, teachers, please have all students return. But it was wonderful to have you. Thank you, and congratulations to you guys for having raised whatever amounts you've raised for the good causes, and keep it up, keep it up, okay? Congratulations. Did you enjoy your morning? Yeah. Well, I did too. I did too. Okay.